What's up tricksters and tricksetters watching this VOD review on the second YouTube channel? Today, we have another Omen main and we're doing the Icebox VOD review. We have another VOD from Take It Easy. We already did like, I don't know, like two or three VOD reviews for this guy. And essentially like, uh, yeah, we're gonna see what he, what, what he can do better on Icebox with Omen. Now, let's talk about Omen on Icebox immediately. Like, uh, you see a good pick on Icebox? Definitely. Up to Immortal 3, you can destroy the enemies. Like, uh, on, in my ranked playbook, I'm gonna cover, like, Omen on Icebox, like, uh, next week. So, you're gonna have a lot of, like, strategies, tactics, smoke setups, tips, tricks, like, literally... Easy carry. Easy. After Immortal 3, obviously, you need to learn how to play Viper. But you can still use Omen as well. Generally speaking, you know, in ranked environment, team compositions don't matter at all. The only thing that matters is that you have a good controller for a specific map, and that's it. Like, to be honest, like, you can lose a match with five duelists, you can win a match with, like, uh, five duelists. Be be better team always win. Better team always wins no matter what. Like, like, literally, like, you have the perfect team composition, four mentally ill players with yourself, and you're gonna lose. Period. Like, it doesn't matter. Against five duelists. And the reason why you don't win with uh, five duelists is because you're already tilted from the start and you don't want to play the game. Simple as that. Now, uh, let's see what he, you know, what take it easy prepare for us. Is there any way to keep up and improve even though I don't have much time to play the game? With proper time management, yes. But you, you know, if you really want to keep up, with those kids that uh, play Valorant like 24-7, you need to play Valorant 24-7 as well. Like basically, if you want to consistently see some improvements in terms of your rank and you want to grind the game, you need to play at least like three matches per day every single day. Like, period. Like you need to have like 100 and, I don't know, like 180 matches every single act, if you want to see, like, uh, you know, some improvements in terms of your rank and overall performance as well, like. But, you know, even if you play, like, one or two games, do some regular warm-ups, do some training outside of the game as well, maybe you can, well, it's okay, you know, you can do it as well, like, uh, you know, maybe you cannot reach Radiant, but you can reach Immortal 3. Which is uh, proof because, like, uh, once you reach Immortal 3, you will see what type of idiots are in that rank, and you will see that uh, they are nothing better than you. And that's it. Now, what's the way, best way to reset your mind? Reflect each round so you don't make the same mistake next round. First of all, like, uh, you know, what you want to do in a specific... You know, map knowledge is very important. You need to understand what is the best idea to be... You know, what was the best thing to do? in every single round, based on your team composition, based on enemy's team composition, based on what happened in the previous rounds, and based on overall economy in the game. Like, essentially, you know, when you die, instantly think, like, you know, what you, wanna, what you want to do in the next round. Or if you lost a certain round, ask yourself, yo, no, 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 ask yourself, like, uh, you know, what you want to do in the next round. Now, essentially, like, uh, I don't know, like, th this question is not a good question, like, uh, it, it, it's a really stupid, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a stupid question, but, uh, uh, essentially, like, uh, every single round that you play in Valorant, you should be tracking what your teammates are doing, and asking yourself, like, uh, are there any mistakes that you need to compensate from your allies, and how you want to compensate them? And every single round you should be tracking enemies on both macro and micro level, like, uh, what are they doing? How you want to counter them? And essentially, like, uh, uh, you know, how do you want to play the rest of the match against those specific enemies? Like, uh, it's not, you know, you, you cannot re really make good game decisions just based on one lost round or what happened in the previous round. Like, you need to track the whole match in order to read, like, through the enemy's playstyle, positioning, and to make the proper 
game decisions, and that's it. And if you really want to grind Valorant, you know, like, you really need to play this game with 120% brain capacity. Like, if you're autopiloting, like I'm doing right now, you know, because we already got Radiant last act, obviously, you're not gonna have a good performance, you're not gonna basically be able to compete against the enemies and, and, and to, like, uh, make the best game decisions. Like, you really need to, like, if you're not playing Valorant at 120%, it's better to you for to go like play play roulette. You know, you 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 will have higher chances of winning uh, winning a jackpot than winning the ranked match of Valorant. Now, when facing consecutive losing rounds, how can we creatively devise a strategy to counter the current situation? It it really depends. You know, what happened in the previous rounds. Like I I I don't know. Like <laughs> like how can I answer this question? Like we we're, we're gonna see in in the VOD if that is actually present in the VOD. Like. You make the game decisions based on what worked and what didn't work. Like, uh, usually if, you know, in a game of Valorant, the worst thing that you can do is default early on. That is the worst shit that you can do. The worst strategy you can perform. And allow your teammates to pick individual fights. Because you never know how these fights are gonna, you know, go. It is better to start every single match. I want to play a team play game. I want to push the bomb sites. I want to play on the refresh potential, play on the numbers of two and stuff like that. And then if the match is really going to shit, you know, just completely change your play style, like, figure something new, like, on the attacker side, if you, I don't know, if you're just doing a five-man pushes left and right, and you tried every single execute, every single strategy, every single setup, I don't know, default, allow your teammates to go for the picks, you should try to maybe punish at least one of the enemies alone, open some part of the map alone, and that's it, like, basically. I don't know, on a defender's side, if you're losing consecutive rounds, and you played passively for, like, five rounds in a row, try to take space from the enemies, like, uh, if the passive gameplay is not working. Essentially, you know, if you lose three to four consecutive rounds, just flip the switch, like, you know, there is no way that in those three to four rounds, you tried everything. There is no way that uh, you played a different playstyle every single round. Like, there is always some kind of a solution. As long as your teammates, of course, want to win and they want to play. If your teammates don't want to win, don't want to play, focus on yourself. Try to get as many kills as possible. Try to win as many rounds as possible. Bay the shit out of them. Try to, you know... Maybe get some kills yourself, like, if you have a teammate that is trolling, like, follow that idiot, you know, refrag him, try to do something in the mid-rounds, and, uh, you know, try to preserve your rank rating loss. Uh, and if you have teammates that do want to win, well, there, there is always some kind of a counter. You know, there is always some, something better that you can do that you didn't do in the previous rounds. Like, these questions are very general questions, and... And it's, it's, it's impossible to give you a, you know, set-in-stone definition or solution or, or a rule that you want to follow. Like, there are so many things that you need to take into account. And th these are more like situational questions based on a specific match. How did you lose the rounds? What happened in the previous rounds? Uh, uh, what are enemies doing? What are your teammates doing? What is your economy, enemy's economy, etc., etc.? Based on my gameplay, should I focus on aim training or game sense training? <laughs> game sense training. Uh, we're gonna see. Now, I think I already review, reviewed your tracker at least like two times or three times. Mm, okay. Okay. So, yeah, the playtime is still horrible. Like, man, I mean, like, you know, eight, nine hours of element is nothing in an act. Like, that is way too little, man. Like, uh, basically, if you're not playing at least, like, I don't know, three games of Valorant or uh, two games, two games of Valorant per day, you cannot expect to, to improve and to rank up. Like, this is way too low to, you know, to keep yourself in the game, and you really need to bump your t playtime up as, as per usual. Uh... I don't know if I should even review these statistics, like, it's only, like, 17 matches, like, you know, 17 matches is nothing. Based on 17 matches, you cannot decide, like, uh, 
you know what's going wrong for you definitely your you know your KST is not good you know team play game it can be better like refray potential can be better you're probably dying in some stupid ways that you should not die and that's it but you know this these statistics are nothing if if uh, you know to, to to give you some set in stone solutions basically not enough N not not enough bro not enough neon and omena yeah we already reviewed his tracker previously and i i told you the same story i told you the same story i love the versatility that you're trying to apply here I would really like you to pick up the Outlaw and Operator a bit more and try to learn these two weapons, like, they're giga broken. Like, basically, Outlaw and Operator are so fucking good on so many different maps. It doesn't matter if you're playing Omen, Viper, Neon, uh, whichever character. As soon as you notice that you can punish the enemies with these two weapons, like, you know, you need to master them. Like, it's so fun to play them, so easy to use them, and so easy to trade yourself for... Not to trade yourself, but to, to make numbers advantage. Especially in, in Diamond, Ascendant, uh, Platinum, Elo, where players still don't know, like, uh, what is a proper utility usage. And they have a lot of gaps in their in their executes and, and defensive setups. Uh, pistol rounds, semi-rounds, eco rounds, horrible. Like, literally, this is unacceptable. Like, uh, in all of these rounds, you should have, like, same performance, you know. You don't need to have 1.22 KD in Pistol, Semis, and Ecos, but at least 1 KD. Like, I don't know what you're doing in the Pistols. Semis and Ecos, like, not good, man. Like, 62% KST in Ecos is terrible. Terrible, bro. Same, same statistics as mine this sec, to be honest, like... Okay. Okay. Like, th there's nothing I can tell you, man. Like, literally, like, 70 matches to, for a... Uh, for our tracker review, is is absolutely, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. Like uh, you need to have at least like uh, I don't know, 50, 60 matches, so I can give you some kind of a better, better input based on your tracker. Okay, let's let's see the what. Let's see what he's doing on Icebox and and uh, let's see what he can do better. My dude is like a medical student, you know. PhD in, in Valorant Statistics. Playing... Getting Diamond, playing that little is pretty good. I am the beginning. I absolutely agree. Like, like with his playtime, that's, that's really good. If if he got raid, if he if he got diamond with uh, that many hours in the game, like just imagine what he can do and what type of a potential he has if he actually plays the game like uh, I don't know, Getrex for an example, like. Sacrifice. Okay, audio down. We're starting on the attack. Sheets on. Is ready. Swap Thirty seconds left. And then. Okay. Uh, I already covered in my rank playbook the attackers and defender side of Icebox. So I'm not gonna dive that much into the Icebox gameplay. We're gonna primarily focus on his gameplay and focus on, on you know, using Omen on, on Ice, uh, Ice Cox. Uh, sorry for all of you guys watching this on YouTube, but I'm mega tired. I literally slept like for 10 hours in the last like two days and I, I yeah, I'm on, on, on a brink of, on, on a brink of losing it. Stop making people play Omen on Icebox, please. Omen is fucking giga chat on Icebox. Literally up to Immortal 3, you can carry every match with this agent. Like below Immortal 3, I would never touch Viper in my life. Like you're playing with imbeciles. In this game. After Immortal 3, sure, fine, you know, Viper is definitely a bit better pick. But, uh, generally speaking, you know, like, better team will always win. Like, always. Like, it, it doesn't matter what type of team composition you have. Like, if if, uh, if your team is just worse, you're not gonna win a match. Like, even if you, even if you have a VCD team composition. Now, 
Listen. Icebox. So, we already talked about Icebox, but I'm gonna, you know, cover it one more time. So, A site is your default site on both attackers and defenders side. Secondary priority, B site. Third priority, mid area of the map. Generally speaking, on this map, the best idea is in the first round to hit A set S5. Uh, and then, like, uh, based on the first round, you decide what you want to do in the second round, third round, fourth round, etc. etc. If you win the first round, in a second round, go A again. And then in a third round, if you win the second round, you can go A set again and create this pattern of pushing where basically, like, you, you push the same side three rounds in a row. And then in the fourth round, we can do some kind of a fake onto the A site and push the B site. Whenever enemies are eco or hal by, you don't really need to contest the enemies on B and mid. Unless enemies defense on A is really good, or you think enemies are stacking the A site. Whenever enemies are eco or hal by on a, on a defender side, like uh, just hit the A site and you'll have higher chances of winning that round than, than going B. Whenever you are eco or hal by, you can do whatever you want, but uh, it's better to, you know, lurk a bit more, maybe through mid, uh, uh, try to pressure the enemies on the B side. There's a lot of this close-range corridor where you can maybe fuck up the enemies with the classic pistols. Shorty, Stinger, Spectre, Bulldog, whichever, you know, Halbai, Eco, and bonus guns you're using. Uh, but up to Immortal 3. But we don't want to teach the up to Immortal 3. They, they all want to be the best, right? <laughs> Bro, like, uh, the guy is Diamond 1. Let, let's let's try first to get to uh, Immortal 3, and then we're gonna speak like uh, what you wanna do after Immortal 3. Like, Val Valorant is divided in, in three elos. You have like low elo, iron 1 to diamond 3, medium elo, ascendant 1 to immortal 2, and you have the high elo, immort immortal 3 and radiant. Like literally, the, the real gameplay in Valorant doesn't start maybe... Uh from gold or platinum, to be honest. And then, like, the real, real gameplay in Valorant starts maybe at, you know, Immortal 3, 1,000 1, players. Like, you know, that, that's where you can see some some level of team play and, 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 you know, actually using the brain, using the communication and understanding what to do in the game. Everything else is just, you know, there's so many mistakes, so many, like, uh, player, players don't want to play the game. You know, a lot of the players are hard stack immortal, they don't they don't want to live this life, and they're still grinding 24-7 on the autopilot mode. There's a lot of the players that don't give a shit, essentially, like, uh, they're just wasting their time in the game. There's a lot of the players that, you know, got Radiant, they also don't give a shit because they already got the rank icon, there's no reason for them to play the game, like, uh, you, 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 uh, you, like, every single match of Valorant, you enter with a mindset my teammates are mentally retarded until they prove me wrong. My enemies are also. My enemies are VCT players. I need to respect them. But I don't want to respect them too much. I'm still equal as them or better. Because you need the confidence. Like, you need the ego to, in order to be radiant in this game. If you're feeling scared to contest the enemies, you're absolutely fucked. Like, don't play Valorant. You know, like, work on your confidence in real life, to be honest. Like, uh, and if you enter the game with a fear of loss, you're also fucked. When you enter the game, feeding, you, you know, you're, you're fearing that you're gonna lose again, uh, lose rank rating. Don't play the game. You don't, don't touch it. Like, work on yourself. Uh, now, so in the first round with Omen, uh, there's multiple things that you can do. To be honest, like uh, in the first round, we can just buy a sheriff. Because on the on the A side, the only important smoke, if you're pushing A, is the f smoke for the screens here. And then immediately from the first round, you can try to go, you know, for some one taps. It is so easy to clear all of these positions, delete one enemy, and that's it. Like push with your teammates, push through the belt, done. Now, once again, I need to repeat this. Whenever you're contesting the enemies on the A set of ice box, avoid pushing through this. A link position. There is absolutely no reason to touch this area of the map or at, at all, essentially. Push through the belt and then you make a decision. Do I, do I want to go through the belt or I want to drop down? If you want to drop down, drop down and then, you know, angle by angle. Clear everything. Like the worst thing you can do 
when you're pushing a set of icebox, is doing this. Being exposed to that. All of these angles. No reason to do that. It is much more cleaner and better if you just drop down. Clear that. Clear this. Clear this. Clear this. And then, you know, go up here to clear that position. And then we move forward. As I always say on Icebox, abusing verticality of the map is very important. Especially when you're playing... My Whichever agent you're playing, like, you need to have the freedom in your movement to, you know, go through the ropes, like, uh, to make any play, essentially. And uh, proper crosshair placement is mega important in this map. How you clear the angles and how you place your crosshair is far more important than how you're pathing to a certain position. Like, uh, if you're going through the belt, we need to place our crosshair here, flick to the enemies down. Then, for the headshot, flick on the enemies up. Then for the window position, then for the off angle there, then for the bottom position there, then for the screen's hash position there, then for the screen's position up here, then for that little off angle there, and then we're moving forward with this type of a crosshair placement, clearing that angle and the angles at the pipes. And then, you know, we do what we need to do, like, depending, depending you know, where, 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 where are the enemies and what your teammates want to do. Now... So, in the first round, you can just do this, if you feel like an aim demon, and you feel you're better than, you know, players in your elo. Second thing that you can do, is like, you can just buy a ghost, with rather steps and two smokes. And for the first round, if I have two smokes, I will always place one of my smokes here, and the second smoke is gonna go, uh, most of the times, I'm gonna do it like, uh, on top of the A nest, like this. Like, my, my main job, in the first round, is to cover as many angles as possible from the enemies. And with this, when, I, when you use this smoke, always go into the smoke, clear it yourself, and from this position we can easily contest the enemies and fuck them up. Third thing that you can do, is simply buying a classic light shield, two smokes and two shrouded steps. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you feel afraid contesting the enemies with a classic pistol, going through the belt, simply just teleport into this the fuck? Into this corner here. When you use this teleport to go into that position, use the teleport as a recon tool as well. Like, don't waste it. Like, basically, I will always reveal myself to the enemies, try to see where the fuck are the enemies. And then we're placing a smoke for the screens, smoke for the top of the fourth end generator, and essentially moving up in the smoke. From this position, we can easily isolate the enemies into one versus one gunfights, try to fuck them up before they fuck up our teammates, enter the site for our allies, and of course, like, we can also go for this play, and immediately try to contest the enemies from behind. Also, when you have this smoke down here, from this position, we can easily teleport onto this position, use the smoke as a cover tool from the enemies in CT, and teleport here, and then from this position, clear the backside, clear the rafters, and try to take the space control. In the first round, generally you want to be a bit more selfish with your utility when you're playing Omen. If you're playing in the lobbies below Immortal 3, 300, 400 rank rating, like in the first round, half of your utility you're using for your teammates, half of your utility you're using for yourself. And trying to make the space and pressure the enemies yourself, because in the first four rounds, only God knows with what type of an idiots you're playing in this game, and how good or how bad your duelists are gonna be. The main benefit of Omen, you're a duelist, you're an initiator, controller, sentinel, whatever your team needs from you. Now remember, on the A side of Icebox, there are five, six smokes that you wanna use in different combinations. Like this smoke is the most important, essentially to cover the backside and to cover the screens, so that we can isolate the bomb set in sectors. We want to fight for the sector one, which is basically this sector right here, then we are fighting the enemies in the sector number two, and then we have the sector number three. And as your teammates are moving in, you want to move with your teammates. So basically, you want to reach this position and move with your teammates into sector two above them as they're pathing into the pipes and into the site. Then, when your teammates are fighting for the sector three or moving into the site, you also want to move above them go into the, into the nest, and from the nest try to support your teammates at the backside, or clearing this angle, and clearing the CT positions. Where your teammates are fighting, 
that's where you should fight with them. You always play with your most aggressive teammates, trying to refrag them, trying to play with them, trying to take the space with them, then. This smoke, most important smoke for the A site. This smoke, most important smoke for the B site. Your secondary smoke, you want to do based on, you know, which guns you have, which round you're playing, and uh, where the fuck enemies are fucking up your teammates. You know, what type of execute you want to do. Like, uh, also, if you notice that uh, this second smoke is a complete waste for you, like it's doing nothing, you know, like, uh, uh, you notice that your second smoke is literally, you know, basically it's not providing any cover because every smoke that you do on the A set and B set of uh, Icebox, except this one and this one, is always dangerous. Like, uh, enemies can use it to fuck you up, you know, at, at any moment of time. So, if you notice that one of your smokes is useless, every single round you can start with a smoke to cover the mid area of the map. Same, the same shit that you would do with uh, uh, Viper Poison. And then, in one of the rounds, we can use that smoke to maybe flank, lurk behind the enemies and, you know, just apply the pressure onto the enemies in the mid area of the map. Now, on the A side, these are the smokes that we have. So, smoke for top of the rafters, right here. The most important smoke. Uh, smoke on top of the fourth end generator. Smoke up here. One way smoke on top here to completely prevent the enemies from peeking the rafters. Depending what you want to do, what type of execute you want to perform. Do you need to play aggressive? Do you need to play passive? Depends what type of a smoke setup you're doing at that moment of time. Kind of like your, you know, your default setup should be this and this. Now, why is your default setup not this and this? Because only God knows if you will even reach this position to fight the enemies that are peeking you from the CT. And it is always better to play, to place your utility in a, in a, with a mindset. I don't know how much space I'm going to take from the enemies. I want to fight sector by sector. And I don't want to use my utility for the sector 3 if I'm not able to get even a sector number 1. Done. Now, uh, when you're using paranoia on the A side with Omen, usually like uh, the best paranoia you can use is on the right side to pressure the enemies that are, you know, here, here and here. But sometimes I also jump on the pipes and pressure the enemies at the screens and in the pipes if I notice that my teammates are getting fucked there. Generally speaking, like, you want to use your paranoia where you see the enemies. If you don't see the enemies, then the best gamble is just to do this as you're using the ropes and from this position to instantly clear the backside, clear the generator, clear the box, and, you know, we can also pick the enemies in the CT together with our teammates, take the space, and that's it. On the B side, as I said, like, the most important smoke that you should be giving to yourself and your teammates is the trial and smoke here. This should be covered, that should be covered, that should be covered, so... You know, we can easily teleport into this position, from this position pick the enemies on the site, or maybe move into the city, surprise the enemies, move into the bomb site, surprise the enemies. And the second smoke really depends, you know. This smoke is fine. 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 This smoke is fine if you want to go for the aggro play on top of the on top of the site. Like if I'm teleporting on top of the site, I'm never gonna teleport inside of this smoke. Way too fucking dangerous. You need to place this smoke, flash the enemies on on tower, and teleport here. And then from that smoke, we want to fuck up the enemies that are on the bomb site. Your setup completely depends what type of economy you have. Do you need to play aggressive or passive? How much you can trust your teammates? And also, like, uh, which round you're playing at that moment of time. Now, let's see what he's gonna do. In the first round. Holy shit, that's loud. Okay, listen, man. Every single FPS video game, you're playing it only in the full screen mode. Never use the window mode or full screen window. And for every single game, enable NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on On Plus Boost.
Okay. Oh, they're sentinels. Fuck their sentinels. Listen, if you're playing a double controller setup and you're playing Omen with Viper on Icebox, primarily use your utility for yourself and to fuck up the enemies. And please, you know, like, like don't overstack the smokes. If your Viper is already doing this wall, but you don't need to use the smoke in the screens. Why? It's just pointless. I mean, in, in this round, if I have a Viper on Icebox, you can also just buy a, buy like, uh, uh, Paranoia and two smokes. Like you, you don't need two shadow steps then, if you're playing a double controller setup on Icebox. Look, you can buy a classic life shield, two smokes Paranoia, push through the elbow, pre-aim in that position, through, through the belt, sorry, drop down, clear that spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, clear the top of the tower, move up here, through the boxes, then... We can easily use a smoke for the rafters. Maybe use this smoke right here to block the vision of the enemies there. Flash the backside or the site. Take the ropes. Clear the pipes. Clear this, clear that. Enemies cannot play, play there because of your one-way smoke. Easy kill. Enemies cannot play here because you can easily kill them. And then also what we can do because of this smoke here. We can basically use the ropes to jump all the way here. Try to surprise the enemies, and that is it. Like, they're, they're, you know, I don't see a reason, like, if you have a Viper to buy, like, two Shrouded Steps all over it. Uh, to buy two Shrouded Steps and to place this smoke right here. Your Viper is already, you know, doing their job for you. Always, listen. Your teammates are, most of the times, going to be pussy in, in, in uh, lobbies below Immortal 3. And, uh, like, uh, you need to learn when and how to move vertically on, 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 on the A set of Icebox. Like, like, there should never be a scenario where, like, all five of you guys are pushing through the pipes and through this position on the right side. Like, in the first round, you're either going through the pipes, taking the rope, getting up here, taking the cover from this... Fighting the enemies there, and then moving on to tower, fighting the enemies here, and fighting the enemies in CT. Uh, or you're going from the belt, taking the ropes, and that's it. Yo, the damn Valorant, what's you, man? Especially because of this Viper wall, like, literally, like, you know, it's just, it's just stupid. Like, like, uh, moving from the lower ground. Okay, nice refrag, I love it. Move, move, take more space, oh, no, like... No, your teammate, you know, when your teammate, when your Viper is here, your Sky is here, so you have a teammate that is, like, here and here. Get at least on top of this box here, you know, on this position, and try to clear this spot for your allies. And then, you know, you're gonna give your teammates a confidence to push in, to support you. You don't need to fight the enemies. You know, you can wait to see if enemies are going to make some kind of a mistake. What type of fight your teammates are going to take. But you need to give your teammates at least a fake confidence. To move with you. Because if you just stay here. Viper is fighting a solo fight. In this area of the map. Sky is fighting a solo fight. In this area of the map. And, uh, you know. You're not, you're not going to be able to refrag them. At all. Like, there's no... Like, you're holding nothing. Like, literally. Like, on, on this position, you cannot support your allies properly. Me. You're holding nothing. Like, you, your teammates are already holding this angle. Viper and Jet are pushing in, you know. Like, you should have taken slightly more space from the enemies. One enemy remaining. Not okay, your teammates enemy took the frags. Generally speaking, the, the golden rule in the post plans like, you always want to play with your most aggressive teammate. But you don't want to risk your life for a kill. Like, just make sure that you have a, you know, proper distance between that teammate to refrag him and to get the fuck back. 
and play around the, you know, spike timer, and that's it. Like, like there's no... These kills that your teammates are hunt... You know, this 4v1 kill is just pointless. But, of course, you should you should be supporting your teammates here and, and you know, just trying to refrag them. Okay. Now, you win the first round of... Uh, of Icebox. In the second round, you're buying either... Bulldog, Guardian, or Outlaw. I personally prefer Outlaw because it is so easy to gather kills on some of these common positions. You just go for the body shots. Even in the bonus round, like, this weapon is fucking broken, to be honest. Uh, general, ultimately, best choice is the Bulldog because it allows you to fight long range gunfights easily, to fight, like, uh, close range gunfights and. It's the best weapon you have against the enemies that have, like, uh, uh, Bendels and Phantoms, if you're abusing the long-range gunfights. But, of course, you know, Guardian is also fine if you feel confident in your mechanical skill. So, in the last round, you save the Light Shield. I don't know, in this round, I would just purchase the Outlaw, two smokes, Shrouded Step, two Shrouded Steps, and Paranoia. Hey, team, let's go a site. enemies are Eco, enemies are Halbai, let's just snipe them. Easy side control. Like, defending a set in equal and held by rounds is like cancer, literally. Like, it's, it's, it's really hard. I mean, Stinger is also fine, but, you know, Bullock is really like Giga Chat weapon on this map. And Outlaw as well. I mean, I, I don't need to explain this, literally, like, like uh, you know, <laughs> don't, 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 uh, like, for, first of all, whenever you want to use some kind of a utility in, in, in Valorant, never. I mean, for a diamond player, this should not be happening. Like, you're never holding that ability until the moment of time when you're ready to use it. It doesn't matter if you want to do a one-way smoke, if you want to do, like, uh, I don't know, paranoia or shrouded steps, like, you, you pull out the utility when you're ready. To use that utility. Like, uh, I, I don't know, like, uh, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, wh why did you pull out the paranoia here? To flash on the contact of Sky Dog? Why? Or just move with your teammates, pick up the guns. Anyways, listen, when the enemies are equal and halbai, your primary focus is gunplay and refrag game. I, you don't need to. You, you, you don't need to, like, uh, Outplay the enemies, you don't need to do any aggressive plays. Uh, like, just use the most default utility on a specific bomb site. Make sure that you have a proper distance between yourself and the most aggressive ally. And that's it. Like, when I'm playing these anti rounds, like, you know, I'm limiting always my utility usage to the to most necessary. Send just one in overtime. It was a good match, huh? Wait, two behind. This round, maybe you didn't lose it, but we definitely didn't win it. Like, listen. Prioritize buying. Guardian, Outlaw, or Bulldog in the second anti anti Quran. Now, so, so, always follow this rule. If you're playing an anti round, primarily focus yourself on gunplay in the game, on abusing the gun advantage that you have over the enemies, and focus on uh, re refrag game. That's it. Like, like, nothing else matters. Use the most default utility, the most basic utility, limit your utility usage to, to the most necessary. That's it. Like, if you're not alive in this round, obviously, you know, you're just gambling if you're gonna win it. Now, since we lost this, uh, you know, antique round like imbeciles, uh, obviously, we need to, like, uh, you know, in this round, we cannot really push the A set again. Uh, maybe you can try it, but it would be a bit of a suicide. So, in this round, definitely, like, uh, uh, definitely, a good idea is uh, 
you know, to maybe test the enemies on mid, try to see what type of a setup enemies on have on B side. Generally speaking, these these eco and halberd rounds uh, in Valorant you want to use to test the enemies, and you want to like uh, uh, use it to reveal the enemy setups essentially. Like if basically, you know, let's see what the enemies are doing on B. We have the highest chances of winning this round on the B side. Let's go B. Listen, if your teammates are pushing through mid, you need to give them some smoke. You know, de depending on what is the strategy and what we want to do. Like, we either need to have a boiler smoke right now, or we need to have, like, a, a trial and smoke right here. Like, uh, I would never allow... I would never allow, especially against the enemies that have better guns than me, to contest me in this... Uh, in this fight. Let's use a smoke like, you know, maybe on top of the boiler to eliminate at least one angle. So we can easily clear this area of the map and maybe decide to push through the kitchen. Under the tube. Split the map, whatever. We're trying to do. Now. When your team is taking the mid control. Generally a good idea with Omen is to teleport. On top of the. On top of the tube. Always teleport inside of this corner so that you're not visible from the enemies. And then from this position, let's clear the boiler. Let's clear that spot. Let's clear the kitchen. And remember just one thing. As soon as the enemies reveal you on this position, you don't want to stay on this position for too long. Like basically on this spot, you want to play maximum for like two or three seconds after the enemies reveal you. Because you're mega overexposed. If you don't have the cover from your teammates, you're just gonna get absolutely cucked on on this position. Uh, you don't need the, uh, you don't need the uh, the mid-air smoke here to teleport there. I mean, if you teleport here, enemies don't see you from the from this position in boiler. Like, there's no way. Like, you, you, you know, you're, you're absolutely hidden on this spot. They don't see shit. Maybe they're gonna see, like, you know, the animation. You know, a bit of the shadow. But anyways, they hear your teleport. Like, I mean, the enemies are not deaf. Now, the second fight that you have taken with the Killjoy, I don't like it at all. Listen, if, if you, whenever you can make a certain fight work in your favor, uh, do it. Like, here I would have pulled out the Paranoia, flashed the shit out of this Killjoy, and take the easiest frag possible. Like, when you can simplify a fight and make it completely work in your favor, do it. There is no reason to risk a clean gunfight with the enemies. Reloading. Okay, now, this... Ah, that's a mistake. Listen. Whenever something like this happens to you... So... Uh, we kill two enemies... In mid. Like, it, this is really hard to communicate, sometimes. Like... Uh, in, in, in solo queue. But this is usually the best idea. So, you play some kind of a default, like 1-3-1, one, one, or, you know, 3-1-1, one, one, or you decide to do a 5-man push through mid, like we did right now, and we, we, we trade a few, a few numbers with the enemies, a few blows. Like, we killed one enemy here, we killed one enemy here, and there's, you know, our killjoy is here, jet is here, we're on top of the tube. In these type of situations, it is always the best idea to completely reset the round. Like, basically, hey guys, let's regroup towards the B main and towards the A main area of the map and hit the bomb sites like the round has just started. Enemies will always need to waste, especially on the icebox, at least one or two players watching in the mid area of the map 
checking the kitchen and that type of shit, we fully clear all of the positions from which enemies can backstab us and make the sandwich out of us, like we clear the our whole, you know, anal cavity. We're not risking any one versus one gunfights with the enemies. And also, our teammates don't have a chance to make some kind of a solo mistake. You're keeping your teammates in check. But of course, you want to do this if you have a, you know, if enemies are not contesting you immediately. Heal, another, another mistake that you're making is like uh, fighting the enemies from the same positions from which you fought like already two enemies. Like after every single gunfight in Valorant, you should be changing your position. Like here, repeating the boiler after you already got two kills from the top of the tube. Of course, like, uh, enemy phoenix is gonna be ready for you. I don't know why you're even peeking. Like, you just, just got, got a kill. Reset yourself. Chill, man. Like, we are three versus two. We have n one minute, 20 seconds to plan the spike. We don't need to, like, you know, do anything. Like, uh, the round is uh, already over. We can win it easily. Like, one, one, one main mistake that players are not, you know, that players are doing in Valorant, like... You need to reset yourself a bit more. Take deep breaths, like, uh, you know, for five seconds, chill in one position, look at the minimap, uh, breathe deep and, and make a decision, like. You don't need to take fight after fight after fight after fight, like, after every single fight you t take with the enemies, or you win a fight. Chill, you know, give yourself a moment of time to breathe, if the enemies are already not contesting you, in another fight, and make a better game decision. Like, fighting three enemies from the same spot, obviously, with 5 HP, 8 HP, you're gonna die in, in this duel. Do we win this? No? Go after war, let's see, man. Okay. So, as I said at the start of this VOD review, the first three to four rounds you primarily want to use to analyze the enemies, analyze your teammates, and decide, like, uh, what you want to do for the rest of the match. So, what we can see is that... Uh, uh, enemy Cypher is playing b side, and enemy Killjoy is also playing around the mid and B. So, basically, like, uh, they're kind of overstacking the mid area of the map and the B site. So definitely in this round, like a bit better idea would be to just let's let's just contest the enemies on A and fuck them up. And based on how the previous three rounds went, like in this fourth round, I would play Omen in an aggressive way because uh, we simply don't know like uh, uh, we simply you know we don't know how much we can trust our allies. And I would perform some kind of an aggressive play, or at least try to take more space myself. Just one quick tip, please. You know, this smoke here, I would never do in some kind of a round where the enemies are equal held by. Also, when you're doing this smoke, don't give the enemies a one way. Like, this is how the smoke should look like. And you're, this smoke, you never teleport into this smoke. That is the third tip. And the fourth tip for this smoke is you want to place the smoke when you're really close to pick up the, the ropes. So basically you cannot place this smoke when the round starts like this. And then go all the way through the belt, pick up the ropes, and then there is a one enemy with a shorty looking you in the face. We want to check that 410 generator, you know, Check the enemies and then do the smoke and instantly the smoke is getting deployed. Take the ropes and you know that the enemies are not there. And then from this position we can use the shrouded steps to play with the enemy's mind. We can like use the shrouded steps as a recon tool to see where the fuck are the enemies. And then you know flash them, peek them, take an easy kill. All of that good stuff. What the fuck is our jet doing, man? Going mid. Joke's over. You're 
I don't know what you are doing as well. Like, I mean, your teammates are pushing, like, your teammates are clearing the belt, like. Okay. There's one boy low. Maybe rotate. Uh, okay. First of all, listen. When your teammates, listen. Like when I'm playing Omen, I don't give a shit about my teammates that are lurking, flanking, and playing solo. Like, always support your teammates that are higher in numbers with your utility and teammates that are doing something useful, useful for you. Like, either executing a site, holding the spike, etc, etc. Like, at this moment of time, I don't give a shit what happens with Jet. She's lurking with Jet, flanking with Jet. Like, bro, I don't care about you. But I deeply care about my Sky, Viper and Reyna, because if they die, enemies have the spike, numbers advantage, and I'm absolutely fucked. Essentially. So here, instead of holding the paranoia for your jet, you should be using a paranoia to push the A side with your teammates, or, since we already killed the Cypher, that is the B player, let's just rotate on B, you know? Maybe rotate. But here you're wasting an enormous amount of time trying to support this jet. Like, instead of supporting this jet, this jet you should have been able to refrag your arena, refrag your sky, and you should have supported your teammates on ASA with the paranoia. Now, this is an obvious rotation. Like, Viper is boiler, two enemies are A-site, we should be moving on to the B, we have the b for free. Rotate, rotate. I don't know, man. Like you're very, very, fo you're too, too much focused on on uh, on your utility usage. Like uh, you need to stop holding utility in your hands. Fight the gunfights with your teammates. You don't need to always use. Uh, you know, like if you don't have t position to use the paranoia to blind the enemies, or you don't know where are the enemies, or I don't know, we're not executing a site. Chill, bro. You know, just just. Hold the vandal in your hands, get ready to refrig your allies, and that's it. Like, you just let three of your... I mean, it's not your fault, obviously. Like, that that, that your teammates are mentally unstable, and, and uh, you know, that they're bad. But, especially because of that. Let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's focus on, 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 on the refrig game a bit more. Like, uh, you know, the, 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 the one of the main problems of players like in, in, in Valorant is like, uh, your refrag potential is very low. Like, either you're not uh, refragable, or you're not focused on refragging your allies. Like, the distance between you and your teammates is like, miles, essentially. Uh, you need to focus. A bit more like playing with your most aggressive allies and allies that are gonna pick up an Im the first fights. I'm like all the way in their shit. Just okay, they are all on A. Play, play post plant. This plant position is good. This smoke here. This smoke here, like uh, I don't know. I mean, your your jet is CT. We can just stack CT and and we have a one way. I mean, listen. If if uh, if you already have like uh, a smoke one smoke available, I don't know. Just just like uh, just use it for the one way for the spike, man. And here, this is a huge mistake. Whenever you are two versus two, on both attackers and defender side. Stick to the anal cavity of your remaining player, remaining teammate. Your jet has 20 HP. We need to use her life somehow. Like, it, it is highly unlikely that jet is gonna kill anyone in the CT right now. You should have stacked the CT position with the jet. Jet, you, you know, 
Jet can maybe hold the site. You hold like, you hold the spawn and that's it. But now, your jet can die. Round is ten times harder. You can die. Round is almost unwinnable for jet. No, there's no way they win this, man. No way. Enemies need to play so bad to lose this. Yeah, and also, position that you chose to play. Really bad. Like, literally, you know. When I'm positioning myself in the post plant, there are two questions. Like, th there is one rule that I always prioritize in these. When you're two versus two, three versus three, and when you have true numbers advantage over the enemies, always prioritize. Safety over anything else. If the enemies are equal, if you are two versus two, three versus three, and if you have true numbers advantage, nothing else matters. What do I mean by safety? You want to reduce the factor of luck and factor of timings to the bare minimum. Like, check every corner, check every position, make sure. That enemies cannot surprise you from some angle while you're watching a completely opposite angle. Like, generally speaking, in a game of Valorant, I never position myself in a way where enemies have the timing to kill me from behind. Like, I almost never die by getting backstabbed by the enemies. I die because I lose a fight with the enemies and, you know, because of my poor mechanical skill. Uh, but uh, I always make sure that I see all of the angles within my sight. And I'm reducing this factor of luck and timings to the bare minimum. I mean, here, if I wanted to play, you know, postplant. I mean, in this specific scenario, the best idea was to just play with the jet. Done. But another position that we could have taken in this postplant is maybe going into the kitchen. You know, like uh, basically we could have done a one way smoke on top of the spike. Make the enemies think that that is just a one way for the spike. And we go into the kitchen. Why the kitchen? Because in the kitchen, we can only watch, you know, we only need to watch this angle. And the chances of an enemy when the spike is planted here. Like there is no chance that an enemy is gonna silently go up through the ropes and silent walk you into the kitchen. No fucking way. Literally. And you're gonna hear the enemy stepping the spike using the ropes like they're gonna be fast. 100%. And I'm watching only one angle. I'm ready to, you know, like, play around the spike. Ready to, you know, stop the spike, uh, stop the fuse. That's it. Like, the only logical angle in this scenario was to, was to either take the kitchen space or to play with the jet. Nothing else. Like, uh, and also remember one more rule in Valorant. It is always better, but it is always better to, like, uh, die in the process of repositioning and try to get a good position for yourself rather than dying on a position that is bad for you. How do you know that a position is bad for you? You're feeling anxious. You need to clear enormous amount of you need to flick a lot. You know, you're doing bop, 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 bop. You're feeling afraid that enemies might backstab you. Chances are very high that that position is not really the best position you can play at that moment of time. Uh, Reper Bugsy, thank you a lot, man. No way, no way, Jet wins this, bro. There's no way. Fake the. F oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, when you have this type of a jet in your team... <laughs> you really need to avoid going through this area of the map. Like, you don't want to get Nano Swarm, the Molotov, the get killed by the Outlaw, get killed by this, by that. Like, and if you're already going through this position, man. You need to jump spot the enemies. Like your teammates are not doing it as well. Like 
jumps for the enemies first and then peek them like. The only time I would actually contest the enemies in this type of a fight is if they are way too repetitive. Like you see the enemy just playing there 24-7, playing this position. I don't know, peek the operator, peek the outlaw, just do a crouch peek onto them like delete that enemy, move forward. Otherwise, just go through the belt, man, like drop down, clear that angle, clear this angle, one by one, one by one, one by one, move forward with your life. Yeah. And always prioritize. Can you not just hug the wall? Yes, you can hug the wall, but you also want to get information for your teammates. Because your, your teammates are definitely not gonna jump spot that angle. Like, uh, how many times, like, during this VOD review, his teammates did do this? Oh. Basically, how, how many times, like, already two times during this vote review, his teammates just did this. Only God knows what enemies are gonna do, which angle they're gonna play. And only God knows if your teammates are gonna win this fight. Whenever your teammates are, like, pushing some main area of the map in ranked solo queue, and you're not pushing on contact, you know, you're not playing slow, go in front of them, jump spot the angles. Because jump spot mechanic is something that players in Valorant are underutilizing the most. In, in the lobbies like below Immortal 3. Like, in, below Immortal 3, I never see anyone jump spotting any angle. Now, please, try to prioritize a bit more. I, I know I know it is a bit dangerous, you know, like... Uh, it, it, it is a bit dangerous, like, uh, to, to go on top of the 4th end generator and to do this. But the more you force yourself outside of your comfort zone... The more you're trying something, you will get, become better with it. Like, essentially, my, my teammates are pushing onto the A site. I usually try to get onto this position as my teammates are here or here. As soon as my teammates are moving through the pipes or moving towards the right side, flash the right, take the ropes, get up here, fight the enemies there, back site, check the CT, use this as a cover, wait to see if enemies are gonna peek anything, when your teammates are moving in, get in as well. Like, it is stupid not abusing the verticality of this map. And even if the jet is doing it as well, do it with her. Th there's there's no reason, like, it's very dangerous uh, to have, like, a, such a high group, uh, high... St like, you're just stacking position for no reason. Like, we are overstacked on this right side area of the map. Enemies can easily spray us down, fuck us with, up with a Viper Molotov nanoswarm, like, bro. Imagine, imagine in this round, if you were on the top of the 4th end generator, and, uh, Jet was on top of the A tower, on A site. Bro, you see all of these enemies. First of all, you're not gonna get tripped by the stupid cipher trip virus on Icebox. Second of all, you can fight the Viper with your jet. We can fight the cipher on the rafters. We can easily kill the Phoenix on the site. You see everything, essentially. I don't know. Try, try, tr you know, try to implement uh, th this type of pathing and this type of movement onto the A site. Put yourself a bit more outside of the comfort zone, and then it's really important to abuse the fourth end generator when you're pushing into the site. If you want to successfully defigure teammates in any stupid fight that they take. New orb mid. This is gonna be fun. Okay, listen. Uh, in eco and, and halberd rounds, one thing that you can try with Omen is the following. Sometimes it's gonna work, sometimes it's not gonna work. Depends on, uh, you know, like... Uh, where the enemies are playing on the A side, but but it is a uh, worth a try, especially in the lobbies 
below Immortal 3. So, you buy a Sheriff. J you know, you're playing a full eco round, or halby round, I don't know, Sheriff, Bulldog, Guardian, whatever, you need a long range weapon. You place your smoke deep into the CT. Bam. And you teleport right here. Communication in solo queue is zero. Like the comms that he, uh, enemies... Basically, first of all, there's a huge chance enemies are not going to communicate at all. Even if they hear you from the A site, they might not say anything to their teammates. Second of all, even if they hear something, in most of the lobbies, enemies are going to say, Omen is teleporting into CT. CT is... All of this shit. Third of all, uh, while you're teleporting to this position, pre-aim these spots, and then wait a bit. Now, because of this smoke, enemies at boiler and enemies in the kitchen are gonna think that you teleport into the city. They'll be fully focused into that smoke unless they got the real information from their allies on A-site. But also, if enemies on A-site are playing here, playing a bit more aggro, even here, they don't know exactly where you teleported. So, from this position, we can easily try to clear the boiler, maybe kill the boiler guy, that is maybe trying to contest us in the smoke. One easy kill, then we can try to move into the, into the A-site for another kill, and that's it. Not bad. Good jump spotting there. Oof. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Try, 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 try this out. You know, like in, in, in. Uh, Try this out, like, uh, the next time you play on Icebox. Okay, so... Instead, it's not working. They're all gonna, if they rotate, they'll come through there. Jump spot, jump spot. We still need to jump spot, like... Welcome to my world! Good. One flanking, one flanking for me. Listen, man, like, uh, uh, if if you have this smoke here, so you have this smoke for the CT, you already, like, let's think about it. So, we know that Phoenix is playing A site. We know that Viper ulted on A, and uh, Kildra is probably in the kitchen. We know that Reyna is on the B set alone right now. Let's immediately take more space from the enemies. Why are we wasting our time? Like, one of the main benefits of this smoke right here is that you can always, you know, when you're executing the B site, just teleport here. And you can easily cross, you know, this segment with this trial and smoke like this. And then maybe you can surprise the enemies in the CT. Maybe you can surprise the Reyna that is on site and allow your teammates to rotate. Maybe we can surprise the Kildra that's in kitchen, but at least we are trying to do something. I don't know, like, you, you need to read the enemy's positioning a bit more, like, uh, like during the rounds. Like, uh, how many players they play B, how many players they play A. If the Cypher is playing B, where is the Kildra playing? Like, those are the notes that you should be taking for yourself. I share with you, as far as I remember, my exclusive coaching videos. Listen, in the exclusive coaching videos, there is something that I, uh, I probably share with you. One training for map awareness and training for reading the enemies. I promise to you, if you apply that training, at least during one match, every single day, like your overall focus in the game is going to be 10 times better. You will read the enemies 10 times better, and your brain is going to start, start functioning again. 
like ju just that very simple map awareness training is gonna help you a lot because like I don't know like here we, we need to make faster game decisions based on what the enemies are doing We're letting them rotate and just, you know, we're not taking any space. Uh, first of all, you know, I I mean, I don't need to explain these topics, but uh, whenever you're engaging the enemies in a fight, there are three game mechanics that you think about. Like, three game mechanics decide if a certain engagement with an enemy is good, bad, or optimal. Game mechanic number one. Speaker's advantage. Game mechanic number two, angle perception advantage. Game mechanic number three, raw, or I like to call it a pure angle advantage. So right now, first of all, you know, like, come on, man. angle perception advantage. My 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 grandma knows about it. Like, uh, like you cannot stand here like this and abandon the peak. The, the rain already sees the your shoulder, man. Like, like you know, like uh, your diamond one player. You know about it. Like, what the fuck is this? Uh, second of all... We'll talk about it later. <laughs> so, Bro, I, just your shot was rushed, like, for, for, a, for a microsecond, man. Microsecond. But we'll, we'll see if this is a problem for you later. The main, the main mistakes in these rounds are, like, uh, you're playing Omen way too much as a, as a support character. Like, you're just playing passively, like, uh, holding the paranoia in the hands, uh, uh, holding the smokes, uh, like... Bro... Come on, like, do something, like, like, it is so easy in Low Immortal, in, in, like, uh, in, like, uh, Ascendant, I, any, any fucking ELO, to outplay the enemies and, you know, play with their mind, like, people are stupid in Valorant, like, you could do something, like, you're never gonna grow as a player, you're never gonna grow as an Omen player, at least, if you're not putting yourself outside of the comfort zone, and you're not repeating outplays, strategies, tactics, executes, etc, etc. Like basically, you need to put yourself in, into, into these situations. Because the only way for you to learn the timings, when to do something, how to do it, is understanding what is good, bad, and optimal. You already understand that based on the uh, exclusive coaching videos that I've shared with you. And based on my rank playbook, you know what is a good, bad, and op optimal, like, setup, strategy, tactic, execute, play. And you also need to, you know, through trial and error, through repetition, to get a better understanding of when you should go for a certain play. But if you're never doing some kind of a play, how the fuck are you going to learn it? Like, never. There's no way. Like, you cannot play Omen only as a... Especially when you're losing the match. Whenever I'm losing a game... My teammates are aggressive and bad, passive and bad, or something like that. Fuck it. I'm like, try to risk a bit more. Try to take space alone. Try to, you know, like pressure the enemies. If your teammates are already not doing that for you. But to be honest, like enemies have a cancer setup for, like they have a viper. Killjoy, Cypher, and Phoenix. Man, like, uh, chill, bro. It's, it's, it's Diamond 1. I, must endure. I mean, especially in eco rounds. In eco rounds. And how about rounds? Fuck the team play. I mean, yes, you should still play as a team and try to play on the reefer potential, all of, all of that stuff. But those are the rounds when you, when you should risk the most. Like, when I play Eco Rounds, when I play Shorty, Stinger, I don't know, Sheriff, uh, Judge Bucky, whatever, like this half by Eco Rounds. When I play like a monkey, like like my job, my main mindset is, I don't want to win the round, you know. Like, I want to take as many kills as possible with myself, 
to trade myself for as many kills as possible so that my teammates have easier time closing out that round. Because in eco rounds, your teammates have much much higher chances of winning that round. 4 versus 4, 4 versus 3, 3 versus 3. Instead of playing an eco round in a default way, how would you how you would play a full by round? Obviously, enemies are just gonna shit on you. You'll see that in eco rounds, like I always go for some, you know, aggressive plays like uh, try to pressure the enemies, try to use the shorty to get in. Like the first opportunity I see to trade myself for a kill. I'll take that opportunity, because that kill might allow my teammates to have higher chances of winning that round. I mean, you're, in eco rounds, you have like 0.6 KD. Whenever I get Radiant, whenever I'm seriously grinding like Valorant, in eco rounds, half by rounds, semi rounds, full by rounds, 1 KD minimum in all of the rounds. And KST is always 75-76%. Like, uh, trade yourself for the kills in those rounds. Go for a bit more aggro place. And that is the perfect moment of time for you to see if a certain aggressive play is gonna work, uh, how the enemies respond to it, uh, so you can adapt it for the future rounds, for the full buys. I like how, like, uh, our initiator, our sky is like uh, the only initiator we have on a team. Nah, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna lurk through mid. I'm not gonna use a flash for you guys. Fuck the dog. Fuck all of you, I'm gonna play alone. Let's see the cross placement. Okay, never mind. This kill on the Phoenix is the reason that why you should never trust your teammates with angle clearing. Remember one rule, if you didn't clear the angle yourself, you didn't see the full angle. The position, corner, whatever. Pre-assume that enemies can be there. Like, done. Once again, I just want to ask, why, what, what, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, like, your teammates are pushing you to the site. They're fighting with the enemies. You're trying to get a gun. You're not supporting them at all. You pulled out the... Uh... I mean, I, I don't know why would you even pull up a paranoia here. Th this whole position here is spammable. You can just kill this Phoenix with a Sheriff in the head, like, through the wall, not even see him. You know? And support your teammates. Why would you flush this guy? Plus, he is way too close to you. Now, your teammates kill the Phoenix. Let's use the ropes. Let's support the Viper. Let's support the Jet. I know that our, you know, our Sky died on mid against the Killjoy. But... Generally speaking, when you're pushing the bomb sites, if you think that one enemy is flanking and lurking behind you, you need to adapt to your teammates. Like, I would always play with my teammates. So, your teammates are pushing the site, and you think one guy is flanking and lurking. Take the site as fast as possible, and deal with the flank and lurk later. Your teammates don't want to push the site, we're playing passively. You know, we're just waiting for the peaks, deal with the guy that is lurking behind you, Together and then decide to do something. Here, I just push on the side, like fuck the enemies up, and that's it. Fifty, fifty, there's two screen. You should have been there for them, man. Oh, bro, like listen, this spike plant is perfect for you. With this spike planted here, you can just play from the belt and that's it. Right now, just te teleport. Belt. Paranoia. Long range duels. Easy win, right? Right? No, we're not gonna go for the fucking ultimate, man. This was, this was, this was way too lucky, man. This was, this was... Like, such a unnecessary risk. Like, uh, it would have been... Like, you you complicate... Like, good play. Good play, by the way. Good play, like... But this is such a unnecessary complication in a 2 versus 2 with the Viper that has two Molotovs. You have, like, smoke refreshed already. And you have a paranoia for this post plant. Like, if you were, like... Uh, I don't know. 1 versus 3... 1 versus 2, 1 versus 4, 
yeah, sure. You know, going for this type of play, you need to do it. But two versus two, like, you know, good, well played, well played. Like you, 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 you did, you know, you did this good. Like, but just there, there's a moment in time for everything in Valorant. You know, like I'm, I'm not shitting on you because I wanna shit. I just wanna teach you like uh, when you should do something. Like this is really like. Fuck this shit, man. Like, just go play with the Viper, Molotovs, one way smoke, paranoia round is over, you know. Last player standing. Know exactly. Because, as you can see, even though you did everything right, we might still lose the round. Yo, she has one HP, man. Your Viper has one HP. Nice. Thank you, God. Wanna push A again? Finally, move with the team, reflect potential! Yes! Move, move, no, 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 hold that, there's a, uh, let's go! Fuck, bro! He was almost, it was almost good enough. <laughs> you just need to move a bit more, like, with your, you know, most aggressive teammates. Like, follow the pacing of your allies. And that's it. You'll be fine. Literally, like, I just want you to be able to, f like, for the next, like, I don't know, three weeks. 21 day. Be able to refrag your most aggressive teammate at every moment of time. Like, just follow that idiot. Like, you're not not there for, for, you know, obviously, this is a mistake of Arena that she's pushing that aggressively and not waiting for her teammates and stuff like that, but you need to compensate, compensate it, this type of shit. At least with Omen, it's easy. Like, I mean, with Omen, you can always teleport to close the gap with your allies, teleport in some safe positions and stuff like that. Please don't be afraid to use the 410 generator. I'm not gonna be repeating this anymore. Like, okay, we're belt. We're on the belt position. Our teammates are pushing it. Let's give them the smoke here. Smoke this. Flash the right side. Do this. Fight the enemies there. They are here. Do this. Check the tower. And now, you know, let's wait for our allies. We need to clear the box. Hmm? No charges. Good teleport. Very good teleport. Listen, usually when you do these fake teleports, uh, you need to... You need to peek... Uh, I mean, if you already want to fight the enemies, or you're in a numbers disadvantage, you need to peek an enemy immediately after the teleport. Because... Especially if a position where you're faking the teleport, like, uh, enemies see that position. Like, Phoenix, at this moment of time, you know, you have nowhere to teleport except, like, on the rafters and under the rafters. He's gonna turn around immediately. Go peek it. Now, if the enemies cannot see a position where you're trying to fake your teleport, then you can maybe play a bit more slower, try to pick, like, a better moment of time to surprise that enemy. about it. Yeah. They have a bad buy, guys. Don't sell guns. Priority is going through the belt because your sky is... Reyna can die right now and you're dead as a potato. Please don't miss that teleport. Good paranoia. We should be moving from the pipes, not from below. We don't want to get fight by the nanoswarms. Yes, we should still move with our allies. You're not there with the viper. M may I ask? What the fuck is that smoke? You know, let's, let's chill, bro. Like, uh, so. Like, uh, we have a viper wall there. Our viper is using a pit. We're primarily going to play around the pit. I mean, generally speaking, I just want to ask, like, uh, you can respond later on Discord, of course. Like, the guy's probably not here. Like, uh, what is this smoke for? Like, it's 
you know, it's okay sometimes to do it, but the problem is like... Uh, mm, why? Like, it's really unnecessary smoke for, for this specific scenario. Especially because enemies are equal in Halbai. Fuck it, just, just focus more on your gunplay. Simply for your rounds. You don't need to complicate it, man. You have a Vandal with a heavy shield. Enemies have like a... Sheriff's... Uh, Sheriff's... Uh, classics... Uh, shorties... Uh, I don't know, like... Stingers. Kill them. Go through the belt. Thank you very much. Oh, he listened to me, bro. <laughs> Listen, when you're going through the belt, uh, don't aim into nothing. Always pre-aim this peak. Do this. Why? Because, okay, let's, let me give you an omen example. You start around here. You aim up here. Bam. I'm always faster than you. Easy kill. Wait, one has um, in this round, you completely fucked, like, uh, your utility, like, uh, setup and placement. Like, uh, you really fucked it up, man. Like, first of all, if you're playing a double controller setup, also pay attention, like, uh, if that secondary controller is actually a good, doing a good job with the smokes, uh, there were a lot of rounds during this match where your Viper didn't even open the wall when you're pushing out to the bomb site. So at the end of the day, like, you know, if you have that type of a secondary controller, you know, you're already at the belt, use the smoke here, then push with your teammates, you know, get into this position, do this, then paranoia, and that's it. And if your teammates are already moving in, fuck the smokes, play with them. Like here, if I didn't place any smokes, and my teammates are already on the site, fuck the smokes. Paranoia, get the... get the... get on the ropes, get on the fourth end generator, and that's it. Okay, we can still win this round. If we play this round smart, we can win it. So we need one more ultimate point to uh, uh, pick up the spike and to go B. We know that two enemies are A, one enemy is boiler. What do we do? We go back onto the belt, try maybe to get one kill on A side. We don't get a kill on A side, no problem. We can rotate all the way to B, pick up the ore, pick up the spike, plant the spike on the beast for free, maybe in the meantime, Reyna can kill the Cypher, and that's it. We don't need to fight two enemies in a 1 versus 2 gunfight right now, right? Experiment complete. 2, two, a, two a. But she has a judge, bro! Hey, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. That was... That was risky as fuck. And please, you know... I personally don't like getting anally penetrated, but... Uh, if that is your preference, um... I'm good, but I usually, you know, when I'm rotating, when I'm, you know, going left and right, uh, or, you know, on both attackers and defenders side, I usually place my crosshair on the angles from which enemies can kill me at that moment of time, on the most probable angles. So if I'm doing this rotation, I will still pay attention to my anal cavity, you know, I will still look, place my crosshair behind me, so... You never know. Like, uh, basically, at, at the end of the day, if I'm rotating like this, I see the phoenix here, I can maybe jump, reposition faster. Maybe, as I'm rotating like this, I'm gonna see the tip of the gun of the phoenix there. Phoenix is still gonna think that I'm maybe rotating, I can maybe come back, delete that phoenix. Just rotate. Rotate, rotate. Just rotate. Just They're both A, both A, both A right now, both A. I will still be rotating here by looking at my ass because if the enemies use the ropes, maybe they could have cashed yeah, you, you there. Both play, both play. Easy. Now we need to play in the kitchen with the Reyna. 
Ooh, this was We're gonna play in the kitchen with Reina, right? Yeah, very good. We don't need to play on top of the side, we can just play kitchen with Reina. We can just play kitchen with Reina. We cannot play there, you're gonna get fucked from the site. You cannot hold this, like, just play kitchen with Reina. Okay, now we can peek because we know that they're both there. Okay. Very good. Very good, very good. Okay. Okay. Good run. <laughs> we just reloaded the knife, huh? <laughs> Joke's over. Dead. Mm. Okay, listen. Let me give you one important tip for Omen. Uh, sometimes... Don't be afraid to flush both your teammates and the enemies. If uh, the result of that gunfight is going to be zero, or you will get a kill and uh, an opportunity to kill the enemies. Like, even if I have one of my teammates in front of myself, if I'm saving my teammates with a paranoia, if I'm going to get a frag onto the enemy, fuck it, flash your allies. You know, your teammates are going to hide, they're going to just run back, you get an opportunity to kill the enemies, don't waste that opportunity. If you have the opportunity to flash both your teammates and the enemies and get a frag, do it. One flanking. I know exactly. Good kill. Good one kill. Flanking. Oh, it's Cypher. It's, Cypher. it's Cypher. One on site. One on site. He's top nest right now. Back now. At the end, here, like, you know, we know that both Viper and Cypher are on A site. We can rotate B, but as long as we play together, it's fine. Oh, but I don't know what what you is. Isn't one enemy like on mid? I don't know. I heard. Yeah, nice. like what what are you watching? Backside, backside, lost. Low, low, low. Okay, from now on, one simple tip. Uh, prioritize the fights that your teammates are gonna take. If you don't have one hundred percent information that one enemy is behind you, you're not fighting Casper the Ghost. You know, just focus on the fights that you know. That are gonna happen at that moment of time. Uh, like fights that we don't know about. Fuck it. We're gonna worry about our anal cavity a bit later. Okay. Yeah, I mean this 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 was really hard to win. Like it's a key game decision that he went up, like, I mean the swiper could have been anywhere to be honest. He was really fast, like to 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 go up the ropes. Bro, we, this was just attacker side, and we're one and a half Where's hours in. Okay, listen. I'll share with you the Icebox playbook with Omen, but I just want to give our general tips on a defender side. A site, your primary focus, your default site. We play A site whenever we have no idea what the enemies are going to do next, and basically, like, uh, uh, when you have no idea what you should do next essentially uh, having the information in the mid area of the map and whether or not there are some enemies lurking through mid market uh, mid uh, kitchen and tube is very important so we need to have some kind of a sentinel's utility there or some teammate if you don't see all of the enemies pushing the bomb site we need to pre-assume always that one enemy might be in the kitchen under the tube instead of the tube or lurking and flanking towards the a link and a site now uh, you play the B site, primarily when the enemies are E core halby, because it makes it makes more sense for them to pressure us in mid and onto the B site. And essentially, like in the first round, you have like six, seven different strategies that you can do with Omen. And I'm gonna cover all of them in my ranked playbook next week, but you already got the Icebox exclusive coaching video, so you know what you, you know, what you can do. Personally, my favorite strategy with Omen on Icebox is uh, classic light shield, two smokes and two shoulder steps, or shorty with a 
with a two smokes, paranoia, and a shroud step. Classic here, shorty in the hands. Enemies are pushing into the A site. Smoke this. Smoke this. Play on top of the 410 generator. Kill this enemy. Or try to kill the enemies that are passing in. We can also buy a frenzy. It is also fine. So we can play classic Lysha, two smokes, two shroud steps. Shorty, two smokes, paranoia, shroud step. Or frenzy with a, I don't know. We can buy two smokes and two shroud steps, actually. Yeah. So. First smoke goes here as a one-way, second smoke here goes here as a one-way. You're trying to wait for the enemies that are using the ropes. If none of the enemies are using the ropes, you want to pick a timing to kill the enemies here, there, or there. After a kill, we can immediately try to teleport somewhere to surprise the enemies additionally, or we can use a fake shroud step to make them think that we went somewhere and just shit on them. The same shit you can use in Eco rounds and Halberd rounds, like there's a lot of confusion and uh, basically like uh, uh, it's so easy to outplay the enemies like uh, the more confused you make them essentially so guys I'm tired we got someone banned uh, this is okay, what he's doing right now. Only because enemies don't have a single initiator, you know, like... Uh, generally, I don't like playing around this smoke, because this smoke... Uh, heavily gets cleared with the enemy's utility, they're gonna spam you, and... Not really the best idea ever, but okay, let's see how it goes. Oh, I reload! Listen, if you, just one extra tip. If you already want to do this in the first round, do this. So, start the round with a classic pistol in your hands. And just do this. So, the, we have classic pistol, pistol, classic pistol there. And we use the smoke like this. And then, you can play inside of the smoke. Bop, bop, kill one enemy. And instantly have a classic pistol to, you know, contest the rest of the enemies. But good job, good job. And it's played this very bad. Now, why the fuck are we in this position? Two, 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 two. One down. Your replay game is horrible, man. Like, like uh, that's why your KST is shit. Like, you're not trading your teammates at all. And also, your teammates are not able to trade you. But how can your teammates trade you if they always die first? I don't know, here, like... I don't know what you're looking at, and what you're thinking about But if I hear, you know, my teammates fighting and I hear the gunshots close, I'm peeking this man He waited around one and a half, two seconds to go for a peek with that cypher Now Here, when you lost the timing To reflect the sky At this moment of time after you started missing the shots, get the fuck out. We still have numbers advantage. We can wait for the jet to complete the lurk and flank. We don't need to fight the cypher. I love how he got three kills and, and somehow the the round is still hard, you know? Now listen, my... Uh, personally, what I love to do on Icebox in the second round with every agent, if you win the first round, Buy the Outlaw, buy the Light Shield or, or Heavy Shield, and essentially, like, for the rest of the money, invest that money into Utility. And then, you know, at the start of the round, run all the way up here, pick up the Outlaw, and just hold the enemies from the window. I don't know. In those Eco rounds, Halberd rounds, players really love to contest mid-area of the map. People really like to lurk and flank. And just play a fast rotation between A site and B site. Uh, listen, man. You know, 
when you're holding some angle at the start of the round, especially the angle on which enemies can peek you immediately, I don't know what you're looking at right now, but I will be fully focused onto this angle for at least like 3 or 4 or 5 seconds after the round starts. Like whenever I'm holding these initial peaks and initial angles, where enemies can peek me in the first like 3, 4, 5 seconds of a round, I don't care what's happening on the minimap. Sorry, not sorry. Talk to me, guys. And then after like, I don't know, 7, 8, 9, 10 seconds of holding this angle, I will be checking the minimap to see what's happening. I don't know how our reaction time was so slow here. Enemy remaining. Spike down, attacker spawn. Good decision. Also, remember, like, uh, whenever you have, like, uh, a sniper rifle aim on uh, hold, always assign some kind of a button for the toggle zoom level. So basically, you know, like, you can go between 1x and 5x scope. Even if you have, like, a, uh, aim down sight on the Toggle, sniper rifle aim on toggle, always have this button. It is so much easier and so uh, you're so much more fluid like uh, switching between 1x and 5x scope. Why, why would I need to press my right click two times when I can just press one button to go in and out immediately, huh? One enemy is here, jet dashed, you know, there. Instead of me doing this or going in, in and out, I can just do this. Attacker spawn. Spikes in attacker spawn. The Reina, Ferra the Reina Ferrari peaked. Bro, where is the kill German? She can be top. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. okay, now in this round, only Jesus Christ knows where the enemies are gonna go. Like, one thing that I recommend you. If you notice that your teammates are pushing the B site of Icebox and you're playing A side with Omen, uh, give them some kind of a one-way smoke. You know, like, uh, because in this round, it's a 50-50 chance that enemies are going to push A site or B site. I don't know what they're going to push, basically, based on the current information. I'm kind of leaning a bit more towards the B side, but, you know, we don't know, essentially. And if I already decide to play Aceth in this round, I have the Viper Wolf for myself. You can start the round like by pre-placing a one-way smoke maybe for for this position or for the second I need to showcase you like on the how the one-ways actually look here. So basically, you can place this one way for your teammates that are holding the And I have games like in the company, bro. Just a second. It's just a just is this a just chatting stream? 
You almost saw your pepperoni. Well, he had white underwear. What the fuck? My ultimate is ready. Thirty seconds. Now, on the B side, what you can do to support your teammates, especially if you see that they are playing a bit more aggro, is like you can give them this one-way smoke here, this one-way smoke here, and previously there was a one-way up here, but this one-way doesn't work anymore. This one way here, you can use yourself if you want to go for some aggressive play like this. And basically fuck up the enemies there, or fuck up the enemies here. So maybe, you know, if you're starting passively on the A side, your teammates are pushing B. You know, maybe you can give them one of these one ways, you know, maybe one way on the doorway there. And they're gonna ha have easier time taking the full B main control and maybe fucking up the enemies. It's okay that he's playing A set right now, like literally, you know, whatever. You definitely need to train your, like, uh, uh, reaction time a bit more, man. Like, your reaction time is not, you, you, you know, you cannot hold these angles that I'm holding, like. And also, like, uh, whenever you're holding this, you know, tighter angles, I always, like, uh, I mean, that's not tight at all, but whatever. Like, uh, you know, if I'm holding some kind of an angle like this, I always place my crosser towards the furthest enemy peak. So, so if the enemy is peeking from left to right, my crosser is on the right posi position. And my eyes are right here. And on the first pixel of the enemies, I'm making some kind of a reaction. Now, when you're repositioning, especially with snipers on the A side, don't reposition in the, you know, at the back side. You know, at the 410 generator. Whenever you're repositioning with Omen on A set of icebooks, from these, you know, off angles and elevated positions, always on top of the rafters, and from the rafters, you're trying to find an angle to basically delete the enemies. You're gonna have a viper wall, enemy viper wall. From this position, you see all of the peaks and pushes of the enemies. Easy kills. Maybe. We'll see. And that's more that you did there, like, really does nothing. I don't know. I don't know what's the purpose of that smoke. Essentially on the A set of icebox, like, you know, you have this, we have this setup, double boobies, that we can use for the aggressive place and also to completely stop and delay the enemy's push. We have this one way here that we can use for aggression, to play with the shotguns instead of this smoke and to also outplay the enemies. We have this smoke up here on the fourth end generator, one way up here, one way up here, and sometimes I love to use this smoke in this smoke, if I'm playing like uh, basically with the shotguns on the side and I'm trying to close the gap with the enemies. But uh, this smoke here, I don't know, like, plus you have the outlaw. Why would you smoke that? And when you have one smoke, you know, yeah, we can use the one there, it's, it's okay. Uh, that was that was a bit unlucky, but generally speaking, the main mistake here is like, uh, where did you reposition after you took the shots onto onto enemies? Always go on top of the rafters, man. Fuck it, top of the side or top of the rafters. You see above the enemy's utility, you have a lot of good off angles to fuck up the enemies. Like it's it's uh, only if you have like uh, you know close range weapons, you should be playing on the side. Players. We actually lose this. Bro, this round is the longest round in the history of Valorant. Okay. Okay. Okay, but the wall is gonna fuck us up. Um, we can peek through the wall as well. Peek? Yeah. Now we can we need to reposition. Fuck bro. 
listen, I mean, if you already see that Viper did this wall, and you see that your teammates are aggro, like, I mean, like, there's no, like, generally speaking, when I see that my teammates are aggro here, I, I'm not gonna play on the screens. Like, how you play on the bomb site completely depends how your teammates wanna play. If I see that my teammates are gonna going full aggro mode, fuck it, mission abortion, like, uh, just, you know, let's hold a belt for them, let's try to play a bit more aggro with them, and that's it, like, you know. Like, you always adapt your playstyle based on the playstyle of your allies. No matter what. I mean, I mean, you already saw this Viper wall. You should have been holding this angle. I mean, you still see, you know, you're still getting tagged by the wall, but at least you're able to support the Sky and... And Reyna. One really good habit is, like, uh, uh, observing your teammates, like, uh, you... Uh, Observing your teammates' body posture on a defender side at the start of the rounds. Like, for example, here, based on the body posture of Reyna and Sky, we can tell that they're gonna go for the aggro play. You play this position only if you wanna take the ropes and aggress the enemies, and we can see here that Reyna is ready to move forward. Like, in, in the last, like, five seconds of a preparation phase, I always take a sneak peek on the minimap to just see in which direction my teammates are looking at what type of utility they're holding in the hands, and based on that, even if my teammates don't talk to me, I can pre-assume what they're gonna do, and make some kind of a play based on it. Yeah. Watch this! Now, I, I don't know about the Bucky. You know, I really don't like Bucky these days. If you wanna buy Bucky, I would rather buy, like, Stinger and Shorty, I don't know, or Shorty? Like, Bucky is really inconsistent as fuck and, I don't know, like, hit or miss, basically. He hit or die. Okay, okay, we can dodge the Phoenix, now we can go in. Ah, bro, unlucky timing. Listen, uh, I I generally don't, never repeat. The snake, uh, snake, snake, Shalter, what is snake, bro? Like, uh, I don't repeat the same smoke setup and smoke strategy over and over again. On every single map, I have like nine, ten different setups for eco rounds, half by rounds, full by rounds. That I just rotate based on, you know, what enemies saw before. I mean, if enemies saw me play here, instead of this smoke once, why don't we do this strategy, you know? Basically position the smoke like this, lower on the ground, and then play inside of this circle. Enemies are just gonna pass this circle, maybe you can kill this enemy, maybe enemies are gonna push, you know, like this. Easy kills for you. We can, we can do the booby strategy, you know, play inside of the... Like, uh, basically, like, you know, enemies are pushing a side. we put this, put this smoke, take the ropes, play inside of this smoke, and wait for the enemies. We can, like, do the setup that I showcased you initially, like, you know, doing a one-way smoke here, one-way there, waiting for the enemies, you know. You're doing the smokes when you hear the sound of the enemies, you're not doing the smokes immediately, of course. When the enemies are here... And here, you want to use these smokes. And then, like, you know, we can play on top of the 410, try to fuck up this guy, this guy, get one, two, three kills. Like, there are many more things that you can do except just, you know, this smoke. We almost won the throne. Is it possible to silent jump from rope to pipes? Should be? I don't know. No, no, it's not possible, right? Even if I hold crouch... Bro. I don't know. I don't know about that. No, no, there's no way, huh? 
I mean, I, I, I never found it useful, so like, I, I never tried it, but... It is possible to do it on the 410 and here, but this, like, uh, not possible, man. I don't know, at, at least it seems like it's, like it's impossible. That's why, you know, you need to learn how to hold these angles uh, uh, as tight as your reaction time allows you. And also, like, uh, don't, don't repeat yourself too much, man. Like, you have, like, uh, on, on the A set of icebooks, you have, like, uh, seven, eight, nine different good strategies, tactics, and off angles. Like, basically, this is a really good off angle to fuck up the enemies going through the belt. This is a good off angle to fuck up the enemies going through the belt. Good off angle for the belt, for the tower, for the enemies there. Good off angle to fuck up the enemies on the belt. Hiding here, like this. Crouching down, looking downwards. Enemies push through the belt. Bam, pick up, kill the enemies. On this position, what you can also do is you can hide. You know, one, you know with Operator and Outlaw, you can always hold this position. And go for the kill. But with automatic weapon, what you can do is like uh, you can hide on this spot. And when the enemies clear this position, you know, we can do a smoke here, like this, and then hold the enemies up there. They're not gonna ex expect you up here because they already cleared it, and they're gonna think, you know, no one is there. And then you ba 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 kill that enemy. Uh, or as the enemies are, as the smoke is getting cleared, Enemies are not going to expect you up here. Bye. I don't know, at this point let's just uh, stack case side to be honest. We need to deal with the mid guy. Mid guy. Bro, uh, I'm watching your screen. One enemy remaining. Nice guys. I don't know. I don't know how how is he so confident that one guy is not like uh, behind him. As I said before, I, I really think you can you can you know abuse a bit more rafters and some of these off angles to try to go for the picks and that's it. Like instead of just playing in the middle of the site and you know not being able to even see any enemies and waiting for the enemies to just stomp you with their utility and push you. Okay, mid. <laughs> Friendly baiter. No idea. 4v2. Thank you. 4v2, Sky can heal you. Heal up, squad. I don't know what what are we holding right now. I don't just, you know. First of all, why didn't reload? That, that's the question number one. Number two, what the hell are we doing right now? You know. We're not holding anything anywhere. Number three, like, uh, uh, like when generally speaking, when you have map, you know, huge numbers advantage, such as four versus one, fuck the map control. Already after after that Phoenix kill, I would probably go in the CT on the rafters, tell my teammates to sell the A set and just play the retake or you know, on the sp spike plant like to go, to go out. Whatever, like, small mistake, like, he knows he's stupid.
Why do? We take. Okay. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Like this game decision, I, I don't know about to say literally. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, I mean, generally speaking, Valorant. Uh, if you think that you cannot stop the enemy's push, you're not feeling confident. It is better to play a five v five retake rather than playing a rather than your teammates, you know, playing a three versus five retake. So, well, okay. Like literally, the only problem is like they have a killjoy and viper, so this retake might be a hell of a time. I mean, if you're already falling back like uh, to the CT, I would also try, you know, from this position to maybe get a potential pick onto the enemies. Because, you know, it's fully spammable spot and when the enemies are crossing into the site, you might get a few picks or some additional damage onto the enemies. Is it okay completely give the site to enemy team if they hard push and don't use any abilities because no time? Like one place, one small, but enemy good with abilities usage. I don't understand what you ask right now. Can you, can you rephrase the question? No, this this is lineups, man. This is lineups. We need to help. Listen, like like uh, whenever you notice that enemies like uh, have this type, you know, bro, they have a killjoy and and, and viper. Like chances of them not playing lineups is very low, essentially. Like I would have probably even teleported behind them just to apply some pressure onto them with the ultimate so that my teammates have any chances of defusing this spike. And at the end of the day, like you know, if the enemies are playing lineups, you need to tank uh, half defuse, like uh, otherwise, like this is so hard to win. Like the only the only reason like why as I said like previous like the only reason why it was stupid to sell the bomb set in this round and not try to contest the enemies is because they have like two heavy lineup characters for the A side man like defending the spike against Kill uh, Killjoy and Viper on uh, Icebox heavy task man heavy task like I know that Phoenix was pushing them with the ultimate but. To be honest, he had a one-way smoke with the, you know, Omen one-way smoke. Maybe he, you know, what he could have done is like, you know, they're pushing the site. Use a blind. Here, teleport. Here, he had this type of a smoke. Here, maybe, you know, wait for the enemies to cross this. Try to kill them. Try to maybe kill one more enemy. This is your, this is your playground, essentially, when you're playing Omen. Like, there are so many positions where you can teleport. Where you can go that enemies cannot think about everything, you know, they're not Jesus Christ, you know. Plus, when they're pathing into the bomb site and you're dropping paranoia onto them, they're dropping the utilities, like, a lot of the times they're not even gonna hear that you're teleporting. And not to mention where you're teleporting. So that chaos you can easily use to outplay the enemies and, you know, find a few kills for your team. I don't do the same shit, man, like, like they already know you're playing there. There's no way, but you're, you're gonna die here. Bro, no, no, no. You, you cannot do the same shit. Like, basically, you know, you need to be a bit more. You, there's many more things that you have in the playbook that I share with you, man. Like, in the in the Icebox videos. Like, okay, this setup we can use maybe like two times during a match, but the third time is already pushing it too much, you know. Like, like third time is like really, bro, chill. You know, like, like, but that's why on Icebox on the A set you have like 10 
I, mean, I think it's like around 12 different setups that you can use with the smokes. Uh, especially for the eco and halberd rounds. And you have like 7, 8, 9 different off angles that you can abuse to fuck up the enemies. Like, first, first time using this in the first round, sure, fine. Second time, okay, it can work again if you dodge the enemy's utility and, you know, uh, try to play around the smoke, but the third time, that's already, you know, too much then. Yo, Jack Reacher, we'll see, man. How are you today? Other problem is that he used both smokes and blind, even though he called retake. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. <laughs> they were like, let's play retake. You guys using everything. Huh? Uh, well, Bro, like, uh, you, you, uh, I refuse to believe that there are the players in Valorant starting rounds on A side this passively. Like, there's literally, like, on this map, bro, like, there's so many things to do. Hide here, peek enemies, take a kill. Take this angle, take a kill. Take this angle, take a kill. There, there, and there. Take this angle, take a kill on the belt. Take this kill, take the kill on the belt. Hide, let the enemies pass, take a kill onto the belt. Play a double tower strategy. Hold the belt, kill an enemy, reposition towards the rafters. Um, this spot we can play in two, three different ways. We can aggress the enemies, hold the belt from this position. Our teammates are holding the right side. And we can also hold the ropes here. We can play aggro, aggro towards the pipes. We can use this type of a teleport, play aggro towards the belt, try to punish the enemies. Especially if you notice the passive gameplay is not working for you. Let's play more aggro. Let's try to TP towards the enemies. Let's try to outplay them with some smooth setups, you know. I'm gonna showcase everything in my regular playbook next week on the stream. But at the end, also, hide here. Wait for the enemies to start pressing the W key. Try to pick one enemy, get the fuck out. Or just hide up here, use your smokes. And then when the enemies are in this crossfire and that crossfire segment, peek, take a kill, get the fuck out behind the enemy viper wall. There's so many things you can do, and my guy is starting the round by doing this. Okay. Why, 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 are we, why am I losing? Sure. Like, enemies should be afraid of you, essentially. You know? Enemies should be like, where the fuck is this guy? You know? Like, enemies should be trembling in fear. Like, while they're clearing all of these angles, without an initiator. Okay, good that he's checking mid. I mean, like, there is a chance that one enemy lurked. One of the solutions for this game was also, like, aggressively pressuring the enemies, because, generally speaking, on... on, on uh, on Icebox, if enemies don't have an initiator, you want to fight for more, like, uh, map control in A main and B main area of the map. I mean, generally, that is, the, that is the rule that you follow on every map to some degree. Now, the reason why I'm not talking about his mechanics, uh, I already... Ju just a second, I need to check it. I think I already shared with him some kind of a training routine that he's doing. Uh, and anyways, like, uh, these problems that he's having are not that... Uh, yeah. He has, like, a few more weeks to complete the training, as far as I can see. I mean, you can, you, you can just keep doing the same aim training that I shared with you. Uh, aim training is not a problem, like, uh, you know... The problem is the playtime, man. You you really need to, you know. You said in, in the in the forum, you asked me like, uh, uh, should I focus more on aim training or game sense training, bro? You should focus on playing the game. To be honest, you know, watching and rewatching the videos that I share with you and just playing the game and applying this this mindset that I'm teaching you, these strategies, tactics, setups, uh, when you want to use them and stuff like that. 
and just you know do some kind of a warm up. You can use a warm up from the examples that I'll share with you, or you can just find some kind of a warm up for yourself, essentially. I have a judge. Cover going but with the playtime that you have, it's really, really high to. It's really, really hard to be like. Uh, to be consistent and and to actually perform every match like the uh, listen any smokes that you're doing in Valorant you're either doing them based on timing or based on sound or based on information that you have from the enemies from from your teammates and minimap like this smoke setup here we and what you're doing right now you don't want to do it uh, like uh, without any contact between the enemies. When the enemies were pushing A side, they were always using Reyna Lear, Cypher Camera. They were pushing fast at the end of the day. Wait for the footsteps and then use the smokes. We can use the rope to get onto this position. It is the same effect, but you're just going to waste your smokes. They're going to disappear in around 12 seconds. And if the enemy wait for your smokes, like, you're gonna get fucked, like, essentially... You know, you're just wasting the duration of your smokes. Okay, mid, okay, mid, mid, open as well. At least three. I have, I have ult, I have ult, chill. Don't pick five people, though. 142 on the right now. I know exactly where you are. This is Diamond Vod, enemy Cypher is immortal to peak. Yes, somehow. Spike planted. I don't know, my guy has, like, a... Cy Cypher body account. And, and to be honest, like, this teleport that you did was mega late, man. Like, uh, when you're playing against the enemies on the defender side, the first thing that you should try to notice in the first four rounds of the match is the macro playstyle of the enemies. Like, what do enemies do on the team play level? They're just pushing S5. They're not faking. They're not rotating, they're just pushing us 5 And in like one round they try to do some, you know, one guy was lurking mid and that's it. Uh, so, if the main place of the enemies is already to push us 5 my teammates call me that, you know, my sky that is alone on the B side says that the enemies are pushing B. Bro, I'm teleporting right now, and you're teleporting... Okay, mid, okay, mid, mid open as well. At least three. I have, I have all, I have right all. now. Fuck it. Like, if you already know what is the playstyle of the enemies and how they usually play, that's the only information that you have. And most of the times in Valorant rank solo queue, you know, enemies are gonna keep doing the same shit over and over again. Like, because the main thing is that you can abuse in rank solo queue on both the attackers and defender side is the lack of adaptiveness of players in solo queue. Like, people are not willing to change anything or they're changing things way too much. You need to find that perfect balance. And the second thing that you can abuse is like... Uh, uh, players like uh, playbooks and, 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 and knowledge is very shallow. Like, usually they have like one, two, three setups they love to repeat 24-7. And as soon as you read through their patterns, it's gonna be easy for you to make a proper game decision. Oh, this is gonna be impossible, literally, man. BCT diff. Okay. Okay. I think we discussed every important topic for this VOD review. We already watched like, uh, I don't know, like this is the third video from Take It Easy. We did the first VOD review in December, then in January, and then like right now. Still, but your main problem is you're just not playing the game, bro. Like, you need to play more of Valorant, essentially. And, and uh, really just focus on putting some time into the game. Like, fuck the aim training, do some 10 minutes warm-up. 10-15 minutes. Watch the videos that I share with you, like, in, in a free time, when you're on the toilet, I don't know, like... Take the notes while you're shitting. Try to repeat these things to understand the timing when you should do them. And just play the game, man. Like, like, uh, and I've shared with you all of the other tools, like... Uh, 
that you should use to improve yourself, like two months ago. But you're obviously not putting enough time in the game, and then, you know, that's why some of these, you know, gunfights happen. Like, some of the fights, like, you turn into an iron player for no reason, while you're not, on, you know, on that mechanical level. And also, your game decisions are so slow, but not, not because you're stupid. I mean, no one is that stupid to not read trade anything. Like, there are some imbeciles, like, that are radiant in Valorant. Uh, you're just, your, your game decisions are just slow because game knowledge is not there. You don't have enough experience in the game in order to understand when to do something, what type of timing you need to hit. Like, you didn't repeat these strategies, these tactics, these executes enough so that they are on a good autopilot mode for you. Like, when can you say that you have improved as a Valorant player? That you reached a next level in your gameplay? You can say that you improved as a Valorant player when the only three things that you're thinking about are what the fuck our enemy is doing, how I want to counter them, what the fuck are my team is doing, how I want to play with them and do I need to compensate any mistakes of theirs, and number three, how, I want to engage, how do I want to engage enemies in this specific gunfight. And that's it. Everything else, smoke setup, strategies, tactics, reacting, reacting to a specific scenario, understanding, I don't know, map, uh, team compositions, uh, applying things on the go, like uh, everything else should be on a good autopilot mode for you. I don't think, like, should I throw this smoke or that smoke? I already know what type of a smoke I want to do based on a specific scenario. What I'm asking myself is in what type of a scenario am I right now? I'm not asking myself, like, what is a good smoke for this scenario? And you cannot do that because you're playing, like, you know, 17 matches, you know, like, you have 8 hours of playtime in, in, in one act. Like, uh, this really requires, you know, if you want to improve your decision making, your team play, which you're heavily lacking and missing, you need to play more. And you need to be, you know, a bit more active in the game. Okay, I'm done for today. Like, we, we talked about so many topics, like, it's with 2 hours and 15 minutes. Well, again, we have another world review tomorrow. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a comment, uh, join my Discord server, submit your place of the day, like, basically, you know, you get $10 free Valorant points if you get, uh, you know, chosen by the community, guess the ranks, what reviews, that type of stuff, all of, good, all of the good stuff are, is on Discord. I love you all. Take care. Mwah.